What's up, Doombots? Tony's going to with another ISO 8 video, this time with the help of two different spreadsheets made by two of my friends. One, Yuletide Bringer, is the one we're going to look at first. Second one is my, my friend Grizzle to the core. Both of them have different spreadsheets that do kind of a different thing, uh, but you can kind of use them how you want. The first one is about ISO 8 acquisition and cost. Yuletide is information is right on the sheet over there, and both of the links are going to be in my descriptions below. He goes through kind of what you should expect from your ISO 8s, how many ions you get every week, and uh, you know, like what you can expect to farm, and kind of touches upon some things like, you know, what you could afford to buy every day, and more importantly, the cost of fusing, uh, upgrading your classes, and of course, uh, finishing characters. So, just taking a quick look at this right here, you'll see that. Uh, to get a single ISO 8 on a character uh, from 0 to rank 5, it costs a total of 70,000 ions. Uh, obviously, multiply that by 5, and that's what it takes to get a character to have a full 10% stat increase versus, you know, 8, 6 down the line. And uh, then you have the cost of upgrading a class, and the class cost to go from 0 to 5 is... 95,000. Now, <clears throat> something I really want everyone to know is is just quickly look at the cost differences right over here. What you see is that it's pretty easy to get a character to ISO 8 level 3, which is important as we've looked through all the ISO 8s. Uh, once you get to level 3, that's usually when the ISO 8 starts mattering or the class starts mattering. Whether you be a striker, you get uh, a solid 10% damage increase. Uh, and the ability to just do a little bit more damage on bonus attack. Fortifier is when they start getting that every turn uh, shield. Healer is when they start throwing an actual heal to people. Uh, and so on. I don't really want to go into it again. Watch those other videos. But you really get the feel of what the ISO 8 does at rank 3. At rank 1, it's there's a reason it only costs 1. And it's free. You know, it doesn't give you much, but... I guess it's still better, and it's still, most importantly, remember, a 2% stat increase. Now, no one really goes crazy for a 2% stat increase. Another reason why level 3 is so important is because it's a 6% stat increase. That is, you know, that's like one full red star, uh, if you can get enough of the uh, stats on ISO 8s up. So, getting a character to level 3 is fundamentally like adding a one red star to a character that previously had none. It's a small but somewhat meaningful upgrade to stats and when you can afford to bring the classes up it makes a difference so just looking at these numbers real quick it takes nine times five or 45 total iso eights to bring a character to uh, level three uh, or you know six percent stat increase uh, in addition the ions uh, that it costs is four thousand times five so twenty thousand ions and add to that the uh, one-time cost of upgrading the class, which is 15,000, it's 35,000 ions to take a character from zero to class three of whatever ISO class you've chosen. Uh, obviously, we're ignoring those things like if you pull a two or a three out of an orb or from an event or something, those kind of work themselves out the same way that uh, getting an upgrade of a red star saves you currency if you were trying to buy a promotion. You know, like, you don't really have to count those. This is just assuming you didn't get super lucky. When you see things from that perspective, when you see the rank 4 upgrade, it is a huge cost difference. For an, a lot of times, you're only getting an extra 10% health. So that jump is great on characters that you really, really need to uh, upgrade uh, for sustainability, like through raids or pretty much anything, arena, war. Uh, and it's kind of worth it, even though if you look at the cost, it's very clearly almost triple the total cost of the previous tier. But when you see what the level 5 cost is at every stage, you realize that what you get for level 5 is nowhere near what you're losing out by upgrading it. And we'll go into another uh, sheet in just a moment to talk about it. But just the... The pure cost of ISO 8s, what you're doing is you're spending 54 of each ISO 8 for that character, or for that character's class, 
to get a 2% increase in stats to go from 8 to 10, where every other 2% increase is very small. But that's just the 2% increase in stats. You know, like that's part one. Look at the ion cost. 50,000 to fuse from a 4 to a 5. So you're already spending basically two characters straight to four, right? It costs two characters to go from zero to four to go from four to five on one character. And that's not even counting how cheap it is to get multiple characters to level three. So don't worry about that. Just the actual ion cost is 50,000 times five because you have to fuse the five different ions. That's 250,000 ions just to get a character that extra 2% stat increase at the top end. And then the class upgrade is, you know, 50,000 for the class itself, which is not terrible, I guess. But look at what the reward is. For Striker, you get an extra damage boost and an extra 25% on the extra attack, that's a lot of resources to spend for not a lot of turnaround. Healer is okay, but you, again, you're not you're just getting 10% active healing, so you're basically doubling the functional amount of your active healing, which, as we talked about, is just more heal, so not that big of a deal uh, for what you're spending. Don't look at it from a perspective of, it's a finished character. That's why you don't have to gear 14 every character you get. That's why it's not important that every single character be at the level cap. Iso 8 level 5, with one exception, is never worth the cost it takes to bring a character up. You will never get a reward for bringing that character to level 5 equal to every other stage. Like Just bring a character to level 3 at that very, very low cost we talked about makes them so much stronger than they were before. The jump from three, just three to five, is nowhere near justified. One exception is in the Skirmisher tag. I actually consider Skirmisher level five to be the sixth ISO 8 class, because Skirmisher itself is a very good class, but Skirmisher level five, not only does it uh, add to the awesome effect that it gives at level three, which is another character uh, with vulnerable gets you know, buff cleared, so two buff clears, it also gives you 50% focus. So just that 50% increased focus might be on its own phenomenal for certain characters, like any member of the Supernatural, um, anyone who really needs to stick something, like maybe an Okoye. Uh, these focus increases is huge. So if you're looking at the kind of character that would use Skirmisher, you can kind of see how the level five would be relevant. But again, just look at the cost on the sheet and it, it's clear that it's way too much for nowhere near enough resources. It's like tier fouring every ability on a character when the, like Emma, Emma Frost Basic is a perfect example. You don't ever tier four Emma Frost Basic because it increases the damage she does, but she doesn't actually do damage. So... If it turns her basic attack from normally doing 15,000 damage to 17,000 damage, that's not making much of a difference for you. So it's not really hedging. Obviously, if you have a maxed character with max red stars, then go ahead and max them out. But you are spending, like I've said before, two other characters to go from zero to level four to bring one character to level five. And it's like eight or nine characters from zero to three. So if your roster's at the point where there's not many other characters you'd like to put ISO eights on, um, and that means you have like 50 or 60 characters at level three, then you can start looking at, well, maybe level four is good on some other characters, maybe not just my raid team or my arena team or whatever. Uh, but once you have half the roster or half your unlocked roster at level three, level four, then you could start looking at what the level five increase does because at that point, they're not releasing enough new characters that you need to get to level, you know, five as quickly as possible. If you follow the standard, bring a character to level three, 
move on to the next one, and then repeat the process, you're going to have a very, very useful roster at very low cost to you. And if you go through this spreadsheet, again, links in the description below, it'll give you an idea of how many ions you get every day, how many ions you get in a week, how you can afford to do them. And there's some other calculations at the bottom. We'll go in, you guys can go into that later. The other sheet I wanted to show you, now to talk about all of these things that we just talked about, is my friend Grizzle. I made a copy of it, uh, it should be here. This is a pretty much active calculator sheet uh, where everything here is sorted by, you know, the type of class because that's how the ISO 8s are sorted, blaster, brawler, controller. You can open it up, it's got a full sort of characters. When you check the box, it adds the character to somebody you're working on. Uh, moving to this is just a inventory sheet for your ISO 8s where you can just type the number of them you have and keep track of it. And then we have the calculations. So we saw those calculations before to go from, you know, ISO 8 1 to there. It costs a total of 405 ISO 8s, which is a third of the cost to bring a character to tier 4. And, you know, we don't even have to pretend the math like nine times tier 3. And that's where we get the numbers. For every character you bring to from tier 3 uh, to tier 5, you've missed out on 9 other characters, at least, that you could have brought up. More, actually, from 4 to 5. But it's crazy the separation of, of, of investment resources for the very small increase. Now, if the final ISO 8 gave you a 5% boost or a 10% boost, not just a 2% boost, yeah, well, then you're just getting a worthwhile investment for your time. If that last tier in anything was as good as Striker is, well, then, yeah, of course it's amazing because you're getting an increase, uh, a major increase to damage or a major increase to healing or a major increase to crit chance or whatever. But only Striker gives you a very meaningful upgrade. The rest of them are just small, passive upgrades at a cost that's way, way higher than it needs to be. And, you know, the calculations are all right here. So if you notice, uh, I have one character selected. I have Anti-Venom. Uh, I can just go ahead and add more characters to the sheet, and it'll tell me the total number of ISO 8s I need, of course, minus whatever I decide to put in the sheet to keep inventory. So this is a way to keep track of your ISO 8s to determine if it's in your best interest. Now, before I close this video, I want to tell people, I understand that some of you say, well, Symbiote Spider-Man, well, Black Bolt, well, so-and-so, well, what's his name, well, what's his face, uh, are worth getting to five. And I'm going to tell you, no, they're not. They are not worth what it takes. Even if your roster is incredibly top heavy and you only work on 10 characters and you use those 10 characters for everything, or if you've uh, been suckered into working on a one team kind of build where you're using like the defenders or aim and the rest of your roster is kind of weak for some reason, it's still not worthwhile bringing them up to five because just that 6%, 8% increase in stats that you can give to any team might be enough to make that team viable in war, in blitz, in raids, somewhere else. So please, when you're using your ISO 8s, never bring anyone to tier 5 until you have a wide enough and strong enough roster that that final little piece is enough to push you through to the next stage or to make something that was difficult uh, seamless there's no reason the same reason there's no reason to ever buy a seven red star because even though the upgrade cost to go from six to seven is a 15 percent stat increase the opportunity cost of missing out on another character to go from five to six uh, is is too low you know 150 versus 100 etc so that's my take on iso 8s hopefully this information helps you if you want anything uh information about these sheets you're more than welcome to check down here and uh reach out to the guys who are doing the sheets yuletide and grizzle to the core thank you guys so much for watching have a good night have a great day i've been tony skinjili and i'll catch you later